Are you exhausted? Or are you living in a late stage capitalist society that's enduring a pandemic that has no guarantee of healthcare or housing and that's not normal and is putting all of the weight and exhaustion on working people. Ask me anything. First of all, how do you know when to take a break? You know, for me, my sign is that if I go to open an app and as my finger is hovering over it and I feel my heart rate increase, I know that it's not serving me. I really have a plan or anything like that. Um, I don't even consciously take breaks. We know when I'm taking them. I realize it often <laughs> in reverse. Um, but I think what's important, like your relationship to anything, else, relationship to work or your relationship to people, you know, etc., is that you want to make sure that it's positive, productive, that it's serving you and serving people rather than serving a company. And that's it. I do. A lot of it is genetics. You know, I've been active um, throughout a lot of my life. And in my 20s, I had a really strong yoga practice. But my family loses weight when we get stressed, you know. And the reason that I say that is because I think it's important for us to not assume someone's health just from the shape of their body or fitness. Um, and it's not to like be a scold. I'm not offended. You know, it's fine. But there are people that do the same things that I do with a different shape body that get called unhealthy. That you all caught me slipping one earring looking all crazy out here i can already hear the women that i grew up with Ponte tu pantalla. okay there we go super important question right now in addition to the wave of voter suppression laws passing at the state level across the country there's also a national attack on trans rights at the state level and we really need to talk about it listen up this is really important uh bigotry requires disinformation uh bigoted laws have required lies about the classes of people that they are oppressing for forever it's how it works and it's happening against trans people it is so important as cis people that we hear from tra the trans community and actually educate ourselves about gender affirmation because our ignorance is what's weaponized to pass laws that hurt people as a cis person, how do you do that? Well, it's great that you ask because tomorrow is actually the National Trans Day of Visibility. So it's by no means exhaustive, but here's three accounts right off the top of my head. Dive in and find more. Are you for real? So let's talk about this because so much of our national conversation, which is not a conversation uh, about immigration, is driven by people who could not care less about immigrants. Often people wanna say, why are you talking about the border crisis? Or why aren't you talking about it in this way? Well, we're talking about it. They just don't like how we're talking about it because it's not a border crisis. It's an imperialism crisis. It's a climate crisis. It's a trade crisis. And also it's a carceral crisis because as I have already said, even during this term and this president, our immigration system is based and designed on our carceral system. Those are some of the problems. What about the solution? Well, number one, our solutions need to be rooted in foreign policy because our interventionist history in foreign policy and history over decades of destabilizing regions drive people to but people don't want to have that conversation. Secondly, let's talk about the climate crisis because the U.S. has disproportionately contributed to the total amount of emissions that is causing a planetary climate crisis right now. And But who is bearing the brunt of that? Disproportionately, it's actually not us. We help create the problem, but disproportionately, it's the global South. It's South Asia. It's Latin America that are going to be experiencing the floods, wildfires, and droughts in a disproportionate way, which ding, 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 has already started a migration crisis. But people don't want to have that conversation. <laughs> then we have the issues of trade, which economically contribute, uh, can have contributions to uh, some of these conditions that add fuel to the fire. But people don't want to have that conversation. They want to say, what about the surge? Well, first of all, just gut check, stop. Anyone who's using the term surge around you consciously is trying to invoke a militaristic frame. 
And that's a problem because these, this is not a surge. These are children and they are not insurgents and we are not being invaded, which by the way, is a white supremacist idea, philosophy, the idea that if an other is coming in the population, that this is like an invasion of who we are. Lastly, it's like, okay, we don't want to talk about this, that, this, that. But if you do want to zero in on the conditions um, of this moment, because we don't want to deal with the contributions we made to cre helping create this moment, but we all now want to deal with the last minute symptoms of it, um, you can look at our carceral system. And that this is what black and abolitionist organizers have already been talking about for a long time.